Hi there. Uh, this is Adrian Hernandez, and we just had a great session at QCore 2018. Our session was on big data to population health, uh, talking about the hope, hype, and hopefully the reality. So uh, we have a great uh, panel here, and want to hear a little bit of what they talked about and share with you what they see as the future and what's needed. So Harlan, you just did a great uh, talk about ginormous data and what's going to happen. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're on the cusp of, of tremendous change within medicine. And, and as you know, our, our capabilities have been transformed through the, through the digital transformation, through the idea that almost all the data that sits in medicine is now in digital format. And our computational abilities have increased dramatically, even within the last few years, so that servers and server farms that can do supercomputer capabilities are within our reach and are affordable. And mobile devices are allowing us to collect information that was unimaginable before and be vehicles for the delivery of, of information that can help inform choices. We're, we're sitting at a place, I think, where we'll look back and see this as a big pivot point within medicine, that we were able to understand medicine as an information science and be able to cull the data from so many different sources and provide it in a way that helps improve decision making and, and takes away a lot of the tedious sort of uh, uh, tasks that we do that we're probably not very good at and puts us in a position to be fully informed around things that we are very good about. So I, I'm very optimistic about the future. There are tons of caveats. We have to do this well, smartly. We have to test what we, we're doing. We need to think about this as if we're introducing new drugs or devices. These have the potential for harms and unintended adverse consequences that we can't anticipate, so we need to guard against that. But I see this as, as an entirely new path within medicine. We need investigators to flock into this field. We need to work with multidisciplinary teams across a wide range of disciplines. And we need to be able to channel what our patients need. But this is a time where I think we're going to see medicine change in, in dramatic ways. And, and it's an exciting time to be involved in such activities. And John, is, uh, is this really uh, all true? Uh, is any hype to this? What do you think? <laughs> And the question isn't, is there any hype? It's how much hype. So Harlan's absolutely right. I agree completely that we're on the cusp of the digital transformation of healthcare. And, and Harlan said, when we look back, we'll say, wow, we're at that. What the point is, though, it hasn't happened yet. Um, that we have the technology, we have the digital data, uh, and we, I think we even have the right goals for digital transformation that Harlan talked about. But if you look at it right now, we're still delivering care the same way we have for 50 or more years when we go to clinic. Uh, and there really is very little evidence compared to the amount uh, of hype. I think there's several reasons for that, and I know we can overcome them, but I do think there's an important role for our community, for the, for the outcomes research community, the scientific community to guide this. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of technology in, that are solutions in search of problems. Okay, so there's a lot of great technology, but what problem is it really trying to solve in improving uh, the efficiency and, and outcomes of healthcare? The second thing is the lack of evidence, and they need guidance. Uh, Harlan mentioned uh, the need for evaluation of these, both in terms of what they do and potential unintended side effects. That really hasn't happened much yet very at the beginning of the need for an evidence base around new technologies. And evidence can be tricky uh, in the tech world, in the Silicon Valley world, in the venture capital world. They're often under a lot of pressure to, to get their technology noticed, and sometimes they really aren't as motivated to have evidence because they're looking to be acquired or get their technology into you know, other companies. So that's something we have to overcome. And last but most important is clinical context. How will these be integrated into the way we deliver care? Not the way we're delivering it now, but as we move to virtual care, as we move to, move to remote monitoring, and as we move to artificial intelligence driven care, I think those phases are coming, but we need evidence, we need aligned payment models or changes in the payment system to make that work, uh, and until we can have a clinical context, we're still going to have an awful lot of hype and not enough evidence. Right, and Brumaji, so uh, how do you put all this together? So in three years or five years, what, what will be uh, the real world? So um, I, just to echo what the other speakers had said, um, just a lot of area about transformation right now. I think that, you know, uh, Harlan touched on the idea of the digitization of really healthcare and medicine, uh, and that's important. I think, you know, John was alluding to, I mean, w when we're awash with all this digital data, I mean, the only way 
that we can actually make sense of it is to use things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, you know, these, these overhyped words perhaps, but, but that's the only way that, that we can kind of consume and actually make knowledge out of this. Um, and then I think the, the last part that, that John touched on is I think where the outcomes research community can really make an impact, which is the social cultural aspects of all of this, right? So even if we get all the data, we get the perfect like AI tool, you know, how we're going to actually bring this to the clinic and the bedside matters not only just in the interactions between us and our patients, but just even how society kind of um, thinks about these issues and problems. So I, I think it was a great session. I think it was wonderful. I think I, I always love listening to Adrian, Harlan, and, and John, and, and you know, we had a, a, a great kind of interactive uh, group. And um, I just wanted to thank everybody. It's a great way to kind of start off and, and kick off QCore uh, 2018. And I hope to see everybody at the, the rest of the meeting, too.